In this tutorial, we're going to go over the tools. We've been using them the whole time because the default tools are the pointer and the marquee tool. The marquee tool, which is our alternate tool, was used by hitting command click. And the main tool, the pointer, has been left click. Before we start using the tools, I want to go over a few ways that we can actually get to the tools. First off, the most obvious way is just by clicking the tool itself and you can get to the tool right here. But a faster way for workflow later is just by hitting T on the keyboard and it opens it up. Be sure not to hold the T. It's just a quick T. If you hold it, it'll close immediately. You just click T once and the window opens up. You can then select the tool with your mouse if you want, but if you look to the right, there's numbers and letters that are associated with each tool. All you have to do is simply hit one of these numbers or letters and that tool is then selected. For example, if you look at the pencil tool, that is number two. So if I hit number two, we now have a pencil tool. So if I hit T and now three, we now have an eraser tool. And so on and so forth. If I hit five, we now have a scissor tool. Now if you look at the pointer, it doesn't have a number. It has the letter T, which is the same letter that opens this window. This speeds things up a lot because all you have to do is hit T again to get your pointer. For example, if I hit T5, I get a scissor tool. If I want my pointer, all I have to do is hit TT and I have my pointer again. So the first tool we're going to look at is the pointer. I'm going to simply hit T. As you move the pointer over the audio region, you notice that it is a multifunctional tool. It changes the function depending on where it is on the audio region. In the middle, it's the pointer. You can select tracks as a pointer. You can move tracks with the pointer. You can even copy tracks by using the option drag. And I'm going to undo that. Now if you go to the bottom of the region, this trimmer tool comes up. The trimmer tool changes the length of the audio region. It does it both on the left and on the right. If you go between two regions, it becomes a double trimmer. It's moving the length of two different audio regions. If you go to the top right of the audio region, we now have the loop tool. You click the edge and drag, and it loops whatever audio region is selected. I'm going to undo that. A good example on where to use the loop tool is on the hand claps. If you remember when we did this the first time, we option dragged to make these hand claps. I'm going to delete these hand claps, and then I'm going to drag out this loop right here, this three bar loop. When I drag it out to the edge, you can see an indent in each time it's being looped. This is much quicker and cleaner than uh, copying and pasting. I'll take and solo that so we can listen to it. I'm going to solo this so we can hear it, but I also want you to notice when this loop actually starts. A quick note on the loop tool, it has to be exactly on the measure when you cut it. If it's off at all, the loop will get off over time. The next tool I'm going to look at, I'm going to hit T so we can see the box, is the pencil tool. And if you look to the right, it's number two. So now we have a pencil tool. At the moment, we're just going to be working with audio files. So with the pencil tool, there is really only one function that is good for us right now, and that is to import audio. So I just clicked the drum track, so I'll add more drums to this track. And you can see that it imported it in there. And I'm going to undo this so we can continue. Once we get into automation, this tool becomes a lot more important. It also has a few functions in MIDI as well. But again, we're just doing what works for audio with all the tools for now. Now the next uh, tool I want to look at, I'm going to hit T so I can see the box, is the eraser tool. And we need to hit number three for that. The eraser tool does exactly what you think it would do. You click it and it erases it. And I'm going to undo that and bring everything back. Uh, now we can look at the next tool. And I'm going to hit T so we get the box. And we're going to look at the text tool. 
And that is number four, so let's bring that up. And what the text tool does is name your region. Let's uh, click that and name it drums. You can also name things over multiple regions in a couple different ways. We're gonna go over that in a little bit after we get done with the scissors tool. Which brings up our next tool, the scissors. We hit number five to get to the scissor tool. Previously, we were using the playhead and putting it in its place and using command T to split the regions up. We were also using the marquee to select a section and then clicking the middle of that, which also splits up the audio region. The scissors tool is actually a lot simpler than both of those ways. All you do is go where you want to split it and then click. I'm going to divide these audio regions up uh, for it to be two bars each. I'm going to do the front as well. So... And number seven. Oh, that's a little off. I'm going to undo. And I'm going to put it right on seven. Now that we have these split up, I'm going to select multiple regions and then use the text tool to show what that can do with multi-selected audio regions. I'm going to hit T and then number four for the text tool. Okay, you can see that these are all selected. Now let's just name it D. And you can see it named them all D. But if we select it, if we rename it again, but put a number behind it, D1, and now you can see that they're all named in sequence. All four. One, two, three, four. This is really useful if you're trying to make samples, and also if you're trying to arrange some beat or some part in a different order. For example, let's uh, rearrange these drums. I'm going to hit TT so I get back to my pointer. I'm going to grab two and bring it to the back. I'm going to grab these three audio files and scoot them forward. And now we have a different order. One, three, four, and two. So now this is rearranged, but we can still see clearly where all the parts were and came from. Now the next tool that we're going to go over is the glue tool, number six. I'm going to quickly go to the pointer tool and grab these four drums. We now have four selected regions, and if you remember, these were all part of one file before. Now let's go back to the glue tool, T6. Now if we click this, it, all, it glues it all back together, and it's called Drums 1 again. These are the same drums as the first part. They're just ordered differently. One, three, four, and two. We took the two bars that were between 1 and 3 and put them in the end. Now if we select this and glue it together, we'll have a box that comes up. So what this basically says is that this is not a continuous audio region. And we need to make a new audio file in order to glue it together. So yes, let's uh, create a new audio file. And the numbers start to crunch. And now we have a new audio region named D1 Merged. And the audio file is now in the audio files as well. Okay, the next tool we're going to take a look at, hit T, is the solo tool, number seven. Now what the solo tool does is we need to click towards the front of the file If you click in the middle, it doesn't seem to play it, right? But if you click in the front, it plays it fine. It just solos whatever audio region that you're clicking. And you can just scroll through a bunch of audio regions real quick and find something. This is really handy when things aren't labeled very well, or if a lot of things are labeled the same thing. You can quickly go through and find the part that you're trying to find. The next tool we're going to take a look at is the mute tool, number eight. The mute tool does exactly what it says it does. You put it on, you click an audio region and it mutes that audio region. This is often used when uh, you're working on a song and you want to take a part out, but you don't want to delete it because you might want it back. To unmute it, all you have to do is click it again. There is a quick command to also mute and unmute things while you're using the pointer tool. I'm going to go back to the pointer, TT, and you can see that tambourine 2 is selected. So if I hit 
Control M, it mutes it. So I'm going to hit another track and Control M, and I hit Control M again and it unmutes it. I'm going to go back to the mute tool to show that I hit Control M to mute this, but I use the mute tool to mute unmute it back. They both have the same function. All right, the next tool we're going to look at is the zoom tool. The way the zoom tool works is by making a box of what you want to zoom in on. And you can fine tune, get closer, and let's go a little more, more, and even more. To step back, all you have to do is left click, and it goes back as the exact same steps that you went in until you're back to where you started. So let's go over a typical way we might zoom in. So we zoomed in here, let's go back, let's look at this hit now instead. And now zoom out, zoom in on a different spot, and keep going in, and then step out, and we're back to where we started. The next tool we're going to look at is the Fade tool, Zero. The Fade tool is a tool that puts a fade on an audio region. You click how far you want the fade, and then you let go. And then, to change the shape of the fade, you click the fade, and you can move it left or right. The best way to know what shape to use is just to make the fade and then listen to it. So let's solo this and listen. The claps are still in, I'm going to take it out. Let's change the shape of this fade and see what this sounds like. I'm going to go back to the scissor tool and cut up a few things and uh, demonstrate another type of fade that's very important when it comes to editing. I'm going to go back to the zoom tool and zoom in right here on this edit. And back to the pointer so we can move this edit to wherever we want. I'm going to put it about there. And now we're going to make a crossfade right here. I'm going to hit T0 for the fade tool. And then we select where we want that crossfade to go. And now I'm going to hit T9 for the zoom tool and just click left click until I'm out. We have now put a crossfade in that edit. We'll do a lot more with crossfades once we start editing that uh, the comp of this stuff from Studio A. I just wanted to make sure that we had the knowledge of these tools before we fix up that comp. So the last thing we're going to take a look at is the marquee tool, which we've already used and come to know that it's used to select tracks and uh, specific parts and measures to copy and paste. Going to undo that. Another good example of what the marquee is good for is grabbing a section that you might want to delete and take tracks out. So that is our tools. We have our pointer, pencil, eraser, text, scissors, glue, solo, mute, zoom, fade, and the marquee. We'll get to these once we get to automation, and we'll get to this once we get to flex audio. And that is all for this tutorial.